better image. Okay. Okay, so let's say we've got a periodic function, y versus t, and every period is parabolic. Now I can't off the top of my head think of a physical situation where you would actually have a parabolic signal. But let's just say you, you do. I mean you could you could make one. I, I'm not sure there's a good reason why you would want to, but you could. Okay, so anyhow, here we got it. Um, and let's say the period is uh, Oh, what's a good period? I'm going to make it really simple. Just going to do period of one. And a height of one. All we need in order to do the Laplace transform of L of F of T is just the integral from 0 to t of f of t e to the negative t s dt divided by 1 minus e to the negative s capital T, where capital T is, as usual, the period. Well, in this case, Our function f of t, all we need to know about f of t is that it's periodic and then we need to have a formula for it on the first, well, for the first period. Okay, so we want a parabolic function with a period of 1, so it's 0 when t is 0, it's 1 when t is 1, it's 0 when t is 1, it's parabolic. Well, that's your basic logistic function. Just um, it's going to turn out, I think, that it's, it's uh, uh, stre vertically stretched by a factor of 4. Now, there are many ways you can get this, but um, in the first period, Parabolic maximum value is 1. At 0, at t equals 0 and 1. You can use whatever techniques from pre-calculus, but since we've talked about logistic functions, uh, you might recall that your uh, most basic logistic function, and I'm not talking about the uh, sigmoid uh, function that you get by solving a logistic equation, uh, the basic logistic function is just a parabolic function that does this, and that would be y equals t times 1 minus t. Okay. It's a parabolic function. It's got to be a linear function of t times a linear function of t, because any parabolic function is. That's basic pre-calculus. Um, and there are other ways to, to figure that out. Um, and then the other thing about this is, being symmetric, its maximum value is going to occur at t equals one-half. t equals one-half, you get one-half times one-half, which is one-fourth. Okay, well, since the maximum value is one-fourth, uh, and the maximum value here has to be 4. You multiply this by 4. Okay, so this function is t times 1 minus t. This function is Four t 
times 1 minus t, which could also be written as negative 4t squared plus 4t. So now we know what f of t is on the first period. Because, of course, the period in this case is 1, so the big T is going to be 1. So this is going to equal what? I was going to continue here, but I kind of went too far there. Okay, well, it's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of this basic logistic function vertically stretched by a factor of 4 times e to the negative ts dt, all that over 1 minus e to the negative s. And factor out the 4, and now to do the integral, now we're just going to write this as negative t squared plus t e to the negative ts dt over 1 minus e to the negative s. Well, this is 4 times um, the integral. Now well, I'm going to break it into two integrals. Okay, we'll have the integral negative t squared e to the negative t s dt, and then plus the integral of t e to the negative t s dt, all divided by 1 minus e to the negative s. Now, I don't want to get into all the integration, but your antiderivative of t e to the negative t s is going to be a multiple of t e to the negative t s and a multiple of e to the negative t s, which uh, you know, might be pretty familiar with because we've done some integrals like this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that much of the integral, and then you, you'll see. You know, you, you'll see how the rest of it works out. Now, the whole idea is, again, I just have to find a function on the first interval. Okay, the first period. Um, I think the graphs that you're given, uh, one of them is uh, your basic sawtooth. You have two linear functions. Okay. So it's like it's linear from here to here and down to here. And I don't remember what the period is, don't remember what the amplitude is. Uh, but it's very easy to find those linear functions. You got two points on the first one and you got two points on the second one. So it's very easy to write that out. And of course your integral, you're going to have to integrate a linear function from here to half the period and then another integral from half the period out to the end of the period from the midpoint of the period to the end of the period. Um, once more, that's, that's very easily done. Uh, and once you've got the integral, well, you know what the denominator is going to be. Once you identify the period, you know what your capital T is going to be. You know where you have to integrate the function. So it comes out uh, very easily. And, uh, you know, I, just looked at it, you know, last night when I was looking at your work. I don't remember what the other one is. Um, I think on the videos I posted, I you know, did a reverse sawtooth. Um, but there was one video that didn't work that might have been that one. Um, okay, well, whatever the other one was, it's equally easy. Oh, I, I remember what it was. It was... Uh, yeah, the function was just like this. Okay, so and it's zero down here, and it's non-zero up here. So 
you know, this function would be like 1 from 0 to whatever half the period is, and then there's nothing else. Okay? So you just integrate over half the period, but of course, when you do your e to the negative s capital T, you use the whole period. So that one's uh, quite straightforward. Um, okay, well, this one's a little less straightforward, but these are familiar integrals. You integrate them by parts. You've got a two, two integrations by parts here. Okay, so the integral 0 to t of t e to the negative ts dt, you're going to let uh, u equals t dv equals e to the negative ts dt, and so forth. And this is going to give you then uv, which is going to be 1 over s, and it's going to be a negative, t e to the negative ts, evaluated from 0 to t, and then minus the integral of v du, but v is going to have a negative sign on it, so you're going to have a plus, and again you're going to get a 1 over s, and that's going to be times the integral of just e to the negative ts dt, and it's from 0, and I've got 0 to t, um, it's 0 to 1, okay, if I was going to use a t here I should have used a capital T, shouldn't I? Don't want to confuse a capital T with a little t. Okay, well, from this, uh, when t is 0, of course, we get 0. Now if we were doing the whole Laplace transform, we'd be integrating from 0 to infinity, and at infinity, or as we approach infinity, e to the negative ts goes to 0 really fast, uh, much faster than t goes to infinity, so you'd get a 0 there. Okay, well, we don't get a 0 there, we have a 1 here, so we're going to have a negative 1 over s e to the negative s. And that's going to somehow match up with the e to the negative s here, usually, often. Uh, and I kind of think it probably will this time, but yeah, work it out and see. Uh, and then it's going to be minus 1 over s squared e to the negative ts evaluated from 0 to 1. Make sure I'm getting that on the camera. Yeah, it's working. Okay. So you're going to get negative 1 over s e to the negative ts. At 0, you're going to get 1 for the e to the negative ts. That's the lower limit, so it's going to be a negative 1 times your 1 over s squared. So that's going to give you fix this. I had an e to the negative ts there and there's no t. Sorry for the digression. Okay, anyhow we're going to get plus a 1 over s squared and that's e to the 0 so yeah, that, that gives us the 1. And then it's going to be minus what we get at 1 which is 1 over s squared e to the negative s. Now you're going to maybe factor out that 1 over s squared and you're going to get a 1 minus e to the negative s and you got a 1 minus e to the negative s here and that's going to be convenient at least for this part of the integral but then you have this part and you work it out. Work it out. Uh, so the main lesson here, even if I messed up something here, and there's a fairly high probability that I did, um, when you have a limit here, your upper limit is something besides infinity, uh, that changes things a lot. 
Okay. Anyhow, once you get this, and then of course you can integrate this, and having integrated this, you can integrate this just using this result, um, but with just one step, one more step of integration by parts, uh, you're going to get a 1 over s cubed out of the thing. Uh, it's going to get a little messier, so it's going to be messier than the ones that you've been assigned. But I'd kind of recommend just going ahead and working the rest of this out. It shouldn't take you five minutes. Uh, and then at least look at what's going to happen with your partial fractions uh, and, and, and so forth if you try to solve an equation involving uh, this signal, this driving function. Okay. Anything you have to do on the two examples you have for the homework is going to be easier than what we did here, and what we did here is actually pretty easy. Okay, but here you just have a function that's constant for half a period, one that's zero for half a period, and the other it's going to be an increasing linear function for half a period, decreasing linear function for half a period. So you have to do two integrals. Um, on this one you don't have to do two integrals because one of them is going to be zero. Just be careful. Think about what you're doing. And I, I, I think it's straightforward. And also another thing is you almost know that on an exam I'm going to throw you something with a little bit of a curveball in it. Uh, I think in the videos I posted earlier I also did one that's an exponential function on the first interval. Okay, It exponentially approaches some value Okay, and that sort of thing could happen. You could have an exponential approach of your voltage to a certain value if you drive the thing with a capacitor, okay, um, under appropriate circumstances. Um, wouldn't be hard to engineer a circuit that would do that. Okay, so that should give you what you need to know. Be sure you work them through, because as I've said, uh, you're going to need to do that in the exam for something I'd make up, okay?